Hi guys, so today's video is going to be a non-spoiler book chat for The Aeronauts Winless by Jim Butcher. Normally when I do book chats, they are spoilery. And so the reason that I'm calling this one a chat and not a review is because I don't feel like I know how to review this book, but I still really want to talk to you guys about it. I feel like I don't know how to review it for a number of reasons. One, I have sort of very mixed feelings about the book but I know a lot of you are really going to enjoy it. So that's one thing. And also I'm not that well-versed with steampunk stories and that is kind of what this is. And even though that falls under fantasy, I just am so much more accustomed to political fantasy and swords and dragons and medieval inspired type fantasy, not what this is. So I just figured I'd sit and get your thoughts, but also just throw my thoughts at you. As far as what this story is about, this is part of why I almost feel like I don't know how to review it because in a lot of epic fantasy stories, it's the same sort of situation where you're thinking, I don't know how to summarize what this book is about because there were so many different people, it was such a huge world, so many different motivations and characters having different agendas. But this story is just hard for me to pinpoint what it was about because I don't feel like I knew what it was about for a really long time. It's a, it's a big book. So in the beginning, you're kind of getting introduced to all your different characters. I loved basically every character. I especially liked the cat, Raoul, but also the girl that he has a connection with, Bridget. I loved the two of them. And the captain, Captain Grimm, was a really cool character as well. Gwendolyn had a lot of, she was very fierce and I liked her. So I, I liked all the main characters a lot. And when the story first starts off, you're getting to know them. And I didn't really know where the story was going, but I was, I was cool with it. The concept seemed pretty cool. The world seems to be kind of like our own world, except for everybody's living in these spires in the sky and there's all this mist and people have these airships. It's cool, but I don't know that I ever really felt 100% like I was familiar with the world. And in this particular case for me, maybe it's just because I'm not used to steampunk and so I needed more explanation than somebody who is more accustomed to steampunk. So while I really thought the world was intriguing, I wanted more maybe of the world. And then getting back to the concept of what is the premise of the story. So at the beginning of the book, I didn't mind that it was slower paced. I didn't mind that we didn't really know a set goal that our characters are gonna try to achieve or set bad guy they're gonna try to take out. I didn't mind that because I was, I was really enjoying getting to know these characters. And then at some point, everybody kind of comes together and they have a mission. It's kind of a reconnaissance mission. They gotta stake out this area, try to find an enemy. And that's a already kind of vague premise. I'm okay with it, sounds pretty cool. But once we got to that point, the rest of the book basically took place in a day, which that's a fat book. And it was, I would say around 400 pages of the book are about about one day's worth. And I, I think for me, I really wanted to get to know the characters more, but I felt like I was starting to follow them around in sometimes very specific tasks. And sometimes I'm like, what? What are we doing here right now? I don't, I don't care about this. And then other times it felt like there was so much action back to back to back, especially near the end, which is cool. And normally I'm really excited about that. But because the setup to it, it didn't feel like really getting to know the characters, which is my thing. It didn't feel like that. It felt like the characters were just going to different places. And sometimes it was kind of slow and I didn't really know what the point of certain things were. So here's an example. We have a, a group of the characters, they kind of split up at one point and they're like, we need to get somewhere to stay while we're here. We need to be somewhere. So they visit this one group and they're like, can we stay with you guys? And they're like, nah, no thanks. And they're like, please. And they're like, nah, we don't get involved. And they're like, Ugh, well, where can we stay? That was like a whole chapter, right? So then they go to a hotel. They get to the hotel and they're like, we're booked. And the girl's like, what was that? I'm sorry. Um, I need a room. And they're like, we're booked. And she's like, what was that? I'm sorry. We need a room. And they're like, we're booked. And then she kind of argued with them and they got a room. And then one of the guys is like, I feel like drinking. And then so they drink for a while. And then somebody comes up and they're like, hey, you took my room. 
She's like, I really needed that room, so sorry. And I'm like, uh, can we like get to something else now? And again, I don't mind a slower plot. I don't mind a slower pace, but that whole chunk, normally I'm totally down to follow characters no matter what they're doing. But I like the characters so much, and I guess I just really wanted to know their feelings <laughs> during that whole part. And I wanted to know like how this affected them and how other things that had happened earlier affected them, how they were scared about the fact that there might be enemies among them and stuff. But because it took place in one day, basically one day, once we got to that 200-ish page mark, it just some stuff I felt like could have been maybe trimmed out and cut down a little bit. But I say all this fully aware that I just am a sucker for getting to know everybody's thoughts and feelings all the time in stories. Most people who read this really like it, so I think that perhaps that beginning chunk where you get to know the characters and then their personalities are definitely there. You definitely see their personalities through all of their encounters with other people later and all of the action scenes and everything like that. I think that first chunk, that first 200 pages, is good for a lot of people and then they really enjoy being with those characters while they have these different experiences later but for me i i guess i just wanted m more of i i liked the characters so much that i just wanted more of them if that makes any sense another example without giving away any spoilers is that there's definitely a ton of action throughout the book but at one point i think i maybe a little bit stopped feeling like the stakes were super high when we were following a series of events that were very intense and they involved a character I really liked and I kept thinking, oh no, like I don't want anything bad to happen to this person. I'm gonna be really sad if something bad happens. So the stakes were built up really fantastically and you're going, you're going, you're going, you're going, you're going. And then we get to a chapter with one character who like wakes up and they're like, hey, where'd everybody go? And they're telling her um, they left to go try to save the day, basically. And uh, with, I'm trying not to give away spoilers. And then she's like, oh, well, I only just recovered from being injured, so I probably won't be any help, which I appreciated that about her character that she recognized that. But then she's like, what's up with this airship, yo? And then they're like, let's talk about it. And we spent a whole chapter talking about the airship mechanics. And I'm like, those people are in danger. Like, can we go back to the people in danger? And this happened basically twice. Like, we basically got two chapters about the airship mechanics. Can you guys tell that I'm like, I'm feeling bad? Because I do think this book is really, I thought it was enjoyable and fun. And I think a lot of you are going to like it. But I, there's, there's some elements of the book that I, I, the pacing, that's what it comes down to is the pacing didn't really work for me but I feel bad. There are definitely a lot of really fun, really good elements about this story. So I wanna shed some light on those things too. First off, I kinda already mentioned it, but I really, really liked every single main character, uh, all the good guys. I liked all of them. I liked the captain. I liked the two younger girls. I liked the cats. And that leads me to the cats. The cats are great. They are so phenomenally done. And not only is their culture interesting, but it also kind of is like if cats could talk and you kind of got the inner workings of cat society. I feel like that's what it would be like. And the main cat, Raoul, how he interacts with his human is precious. Their relationship is adorable. If you like animal companions, you should definitely read this because Raoul and Bridget are just the cutest little things. I loved Bridget so much. She was so sweet and she was so different from your typical character because she was so sweet. And she thought of things just so simply, like not that she was dumb, but it was just kind of like, well, if it's like this, then this should be like this. You just always had a very logical conclusion to things. And the way the cat was with her was, it was precious. It was adorable. And I loved the two of them together. Also the writing style itself, I will admit the word blinked was probably used a few too many times for my personal taste. But other than that, I really liked the way that Jim Butcher described things. It was a straightforward writing style. It's not super complex and it's not really colorful as far as the similes and metaphors and stuff aren't like in excess and they're not really bizarre or anything. They're pretty straightforward, but he still uses some words that I thought added a little bit of flavor 
And I really liked that. And for those of you that really love audiobooks, one of the best narrators I've personally come across, I loved this man's voice. I thought his actual narration was great. And then the voices he gave the characters, they never felt super overdone. But the voices he gave the cats were so good. They were super growly and low, and I loved them. So if you're looking for a good book to pick up on audiobook, you should, you should check this one out. Anyway, I know that this was kind of all over the place, but I think I just am confused with my thoughts, with my own thoughts, because I, I just so love the characters. And when I love the characters in a story, that usually means I love the story because I'm a really character-driven reader. But I don't know, there was just something about this and I, I think it was the pacing for me that I, it made it to where I, oh, when I first started, I was like, this is gonna be a new favorite. I'm loving this, I was really eating it up. But then I, I just wanted more of the characters. I just wanted more of their, their thoughts and feelings. And um, I think you guys should definitely check it out if, if the concept sounds cool, if you like steampunk, if you like Animal Companions, there's just so much about it I think you guys would really love. But I just didn't, I didn't feel right trying to review it because I didn't think I would be able to do so accurately. Because I did such a poor job of talking about this book and my words were everywhere and super scattered, for those of you that have read it, you should let other people know more concisely your thoughts about this book. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Check it out because I do think it's good and worth your time. It's just, yeah, just, you should, you should definitely check it out. I still think it was a good story. But anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye.